Hello and welcome to Program It Yourself in Java. My name is Chris and in this episode we are going to talk about inheritance. The concept of inheritance allows us to take a class we already created and carry over all of its attributes and behavior into a more specific subtype. This is something best explained through demonstration. Let's start by creating a new class. You should already know how to do this by now. Go ahead and call this class animal. Now, animal is pretty generic. There is a wide variety of animals on our planet and trying to describe all of them in a single class is just downright impossible. However, there are a few things that every animal has in common. Off the top of my head, I'm thinking of name, weight and size. I'm sure you could think of other things as well, but these attributes are going to suffice for now. For the sake of this tutorial, let's also say that every animal has the ability to state its name, kinda like Pokemon. I didn't create a constructor for this class because I don't plan on doing anything special whenever I instantiate an animal. Don't worry, the compiler will generate a default constructor for you internally. The next step is to create our subtype, and this depends on how finely you want to grain your classes. Let's keep it simple for now and just create a simple cat class. We know that every cat is an animal, but our program sure doesn't. In order to tell our program that cats are a subtype of animal, we are going to make use of the extends keyword. We go to the line where it says public class cat and after that we add the following. Public class cat extends animal. Cat is now a sub or derived class of animal and therefore has every attribute and ability that an animal has. We don't have to declare weight, name and size again because it's carried over from our animal class. Same goes for the state name method. However, we can go ahead and specify this class a little more. In addition to everything that an animal has, cats could also contain a field for fur color. Not every animal has fur, but most cats do. Now for this class, I wish to create a constructor. As a parameter, I want to take in a fur color. Since I'm in the cat class, I want the name of every animal that is a cat to be cat. So I can put it in the constructor like that. And fur color gets the color parameter. Now let's also add an extra method to this class. While every cat can state its name, it can also meow. And that's it for our cat class. But before we move on, let me address this here again. I didn't feel like I explained it very well yet. As you can see, we have access to a name field, even though in our global namespace up here, we didn't declare any. This is because every cat is an animal, and every animal comes with a name. And just like before, names can be different from instance to instance. Anyway, let's go ahead and create one more subclass of animal. This right here is going to become a dog. And dogs are also animals. Now dogs of course also have a fur color. I did this intentionally to show you a problem that you can run into. If we want to specify a fur color for our dogs as well, we would need to declare it here like we did with the cat class. And this is a big no-no in coding land, because this would lead to code duplication. Code duplication essentially means that you are repeating the exact same chunks of code in several different classes. This is not only bad from a design perspective, it also makes it harder to maintain your code base. Imagine that you suddenly don't have any interest in fur color anymore, but you've already implemented 10 different classes. 
you would have to walk through all of those classes and remove them individually. Whenever you're designing a program, one of your top priorities should be to avoid code duplication. A solution for the problem right here would be first to create a class that has a fur color attribute and then make subtypes of that. So you would have your animal class, from that a subtype called animals with fur, and from that your subtypes cat and dog. Now again, this all boils down to design decisions, and you can very quickly over-engineer your inheritance hierarchy. Now if I confused you with that a little, don't worry about it, because we are going to discuss this in more detail in the future. Anyway, for now let's finish up our dog class. Even though I said it's a big no-no, I'm going to declare a fur color in here as well. I don't want to overcomplicate this tutorial. Every dog instance gets the name dog whenever we invoke this constructor, and the fur color is as we parameterize. Also, every dog is going to be able to bark. Now it's finally time to head over to our main class. Creating our instances is the same as before. We are creating a cat and a dog instance, and I'm also going to create an animal just to show you something. Let's check out our animal first. Now of course, invoking the state name method on our animal isn't going to do anything, because animals don't have a name. If, however, we are referring to our cat instance, we can see that we have access to name, size and weight as well, but we also get to choose fur color. We get our state name method as well, plus the meow method that we created specifically for this class. You can also see at the end of this line that it says cat. At the three fields right here, it says animal, because they originally stem from that class. Now let's have our cat state its name, as well as meow. Same for our dog. And if we go ahead and run our program, we get cat and meow, as well as dog and bark bark. And that's pretty much your introduction to inheritance. I hope I didn't confuse you guys too much and you understood the idea behind it. Anyway, this is all the time I've got for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll be glad to help you out. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. See you next time.